before you hear from Mark Willis, the former Manchester City striker, a big shout out to my sponsors. They are charleslouis.co.uk, they are chartered mortgage advisors, they're involved in all aspects of house moving. They're run by a City fan, so give them a shout out. Follow them on Twitter at Charles Louis Group and find them, as I say on the internet, www.charleslouis.co.uk. They've stuck with me for the podcast for this season in difficult times and I really appreciate it, guys. So for those who've just stumbled across this channel or know about it anywhere, you'll know if you're a regular and a subscriber that this channel was all about match day Manchester City vlogs. For the time being, I've stopped doing those because A, we're not in stadiums anymore. I think that was one of the attractions of doing it. But also because apart from Charles Louis, as I say, very appreciative of them, uh, the other sponsorship opportunities have gone away because of the difficult times that we're in at the moment. Uh, but I still do a weekly podcast, which Charles Louis supports, and that is an audio podcast. Occasionally, I put video versions of sections of those audio podcasts up on this channel. And this is a little flavour of the one we did last weekend when Mark Lillis, the former City striker, was my guest. A little bit later on, he'll talk about youth football and his views of some of the young players at City. But first of all, his own COVID-19 story. It's been a bit of a scary time for myself and my wife who've got uh, COVID uh, at the same time. So I've just come out of uh, lockdown, as they call it. So um, self-isolating for 14 days, I think now. But yeah, we're out of it. We're on the men now. Cheesy. Thanks for uh, caring. Absolutely. Of course I care. Um, you, you're one of my heroes, as, as all of the City players are. But you being a blue as well, you know, a dyed in the wool blue. Um, your dad used to be on the the door when we went down to Old Trafford. Um, obviously, you've got son Josh and Georgina, your daughter. I mean, the whole family bleeds blue, doesn't it? Yeah, it's the I think when we I was born on Oxford Road, and I think when you're ten seconds when you come out of Mum's womb, you, you're a blue. You're either blue or uh, the other side of the Manchester. But uh, you don't have a say in it. But you know, I, I absolutely loved him to play for him as well and score on my debut. And actually run to the kid packs with my mates in there and run to the main stand. It, it's just, I can't describe the feeling that uh, that I've had. And it's a pleasure that I'll be able to have no regrets because I could have gone to a couple more clubs when I left Huddersfield. But when City had come in, it, it was, it was no brain. Mm. I, I was, I would have run down like, Oxford Street naked. No, sorry, I can't say <laughs> that. But, uh, I would have run down and got to, and signed it. But no, it was a great times there for me. Uh, and I'm still, I'm a blue and I still try and get to the games. Um, I've recently just gone back into football because I was at that stage. I was working in a care home in Presswich in Manchester and uh, I was getting to the stage. Uh, I had my 60th in January and uh, I thought, I'm just going to be a fan now. You know, and just come and watch City every week. But obviously, I've got back into into the game. So that's, uh, that's, a good, that's good for me. But um, I was out for about a year and a half after coming back from India. Um, where we were working over there, we had a great time. But um, I just remember driving down the motorway, thinking that's that's me now. I'm just going to be a blue now, be a proper fan. I was around the country watching them play, and then obviously this pandemic's kicked <laughs> in. But and I've got back in the game, which is good for me. So uh, still, 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 always watch the games on the telly and everything. Still back jump up and down like a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> back in the game at Scunthorpe, and presumably the, the reason you've had the COVID is because it went through the club, didn't it? You had some games called off. Yeah, that's right. I think you, when when you when you when you uh, you get it, they, they say go back five days where it was. And I was actually in Huddersfield. We were playing Huddersfield under twenty three. Scunny was. So they're saying if you could have got it there, you could have picked it up there. So you don't know with this, you know, it just hits you. I, I never dreamt I'd get it and then buy it, just knock it out of you. Uh, and I feel so much for all the people that were in our care homes as well who passed away uh, with the COVID. It was tough, that. It was a tough uh, to working in that industry. And, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was that fed uh, care home in, in Presswich and great, a great family there, all the people that work there and all, all the nurses and everyone. You know, just they just accepted me in. There was a, a few reds and a few blues, a few of the older ones seeing me play, so I was swift about that. Um, but uh, no, we're okay at the minute. I recently opened a, a local football club in Huddersfield, Golker FC, uh, Golker United FC. Uh, I opened the stand for them, uh, just cut the ribbon, and they ended up staying and watching the game that night. And there's about 300 people in there, and see the community come together and everyone. 
there was loads, you know, lads there and women there all having, a, you know, a pint or half a, half a beer, watching their team play, their local team play. There were a lot of Huddersfield Town fans there, but it was amazing. And then on the Saturday, I go to, to sit in a dugout where there's no supporters at all. And you can't, a lot of the times, you, I call it momentum. When you've got momentum and when you're passing well, the crowd don't half give you a boost. But obviously with this pandemic now and allowing no fans in, I think it's killed the game a little bit. Another part of the conversation we had with Mark within the context of the audio podcast, which remember you can find on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, just by searching Ian Cheeseman or Forever Blue, was about young players. Uh, clearly, Mark was a City fan who came to City and played his dream, which is to play for City, just a bit like uh, young Phil Foden does at the moment for the Blues. You don't want to. You don't want to say more or less anything to fold and just just go and embrace that pitch. Go, I call it to the young players than that. It says there's your dance floor. Go and express yourself. There's no fear. Don't give him any fear and just let him go out. And he plays with freedom and he dribbles. There's not a lot. Of these guys now are dribble, great dribblers. We've lost that a little bit. And I keep going back to about the fans. That the fans. You don't play for the, your name on the shirt. You play for the badge that you've got on your on your heart here. This, that's what you play for, and that's what I did at City. And and when you've got momentum, especially down the kickbacks, if you was running down the wing, you knew someone, one of your teammates, was coming past you because the fans are more, more telling you what to do. So, but uh, with Foden, no, he, he, he's he's going to be a star. He's different class, and he, and he, and you you know he just loves the game as well. You know, see some some players who are on that much money, they just come off, the, the face doesn't change, they get substituted, they just sit down. You got a young fold in there. He just makes me smile. You know, I've not watched City for a couple of uh, weeks now, obviously because of the the pandemic. Um, but um, it sounds like we're doing okay. But uh, I seen Walker play a couple of three or four weeks, and he was flying. And you're looking and thought, yeah, he, he, he's got he's got that fire inside him. Even though there's no fans in there, he can maybe might, might be about motivation as well. Cause, you know, some players can only mot- uh, have motivation when there's a full house in. Or if it's empty, it's like, oof, you know, it depends. It depends, but no, Foden, I think he's spot on, and I think the lads are, are really speaking well uh, on this uh, podcast. I think they've, you know, they really, you can see that they're proper blues, and and they want us to to do well, and they're analysing us, and they want them to grow better. They've not really, you know, uh, had a had a, a really pop at the, the lads, but um, that's us in it. That's City fans. That's what we are. We always look on that side where Ooh, I'm not sure. <laughs> We're not sure we've had them not punches today for some reason. And it might be only two minutes gone of the game, you know. You had a close-up look at City's next batch when, I mean, I was there as well and I saw you on the pitch when Scunthorpe's first team played City's EDS team in the uh, leasing.com trophy. I think Liam Delap scored and played that night. And, and obviously you're a perfect person to ask about him and, and the other players. Uh, did you... Are you surprised that Delap's not been given more game time in in this period where Sergio and Gabriel Jesus are not available? Yeah, maybe, but Pep's Pep. You know, he, he'll he'll do what he thinks is right for that player. But um, he's he's got good physique as well. He looks powerful and he's got strength, which is good, and especially in the in the Premier League. Well, that team, I don't know if you not noticed. I mean, we we didn't to be truthful, we didn't have our first team out. We had the back four was I think we had about. 16 year old finishing the game but anyway it was at the end I stood and when they come past I give them a little punch on, on the fit, uh, on the wrist because I was so proud of Man City team and they would just beat us but I was so proud they got a goal they wanted to go and get another goal they got a goal they got one to get another goal you know we, we had a right pop up to our, our players in there you know you, you got, but they got turned over by a good team that attacked excellently got back behind the ball excellently and you're thinking this is looking good for the future of our players oh, hopefully you've got a manager that's going to give them chance like he's done with Foden he's got Doyley there in there now he's got a few of the other players in there but the boy that you used to say in there he's, he, he looks a powerful kid he looks like he could handle premiership football he's got an attitude yeah. doesn't he I mean he he gets, seems to get booked every time I see him um, but he's got an attitude and you've got to have an attitude to make it in football haven't you Oh, 100%, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's that's one of the top things that I say. What's their attitudes like? You know, when you get people to come in on trial, what they like around the dressing room, what they like with the players, what they like with the staff, what's their upbringing, what attitude, what's their attitude like? And that's that's massive now in the game. 
it always has been anyway when we, when I played it just having the right attitude to pull that shirt on get your boots on socks shorts get out I remember kipats coming out and you could see the kipats and it was a, if it was a good crowd in there it was packed in there and that gives me I've still got their memories now, but yeah attitude is is a, is, a, is a great word she's a while we're on the subject of memories, I should ask you really just to it's it's the cliche predictable question, but what's your favourite memory then of, of being on that pitch in a blue shirt? Scoring on my debut at home, peeled off to my mum and dad that were in the stand they had season ticket holders. But um I scored from a penalty and I peeled off to the kip acts first and I was giving it all my jumping like I used to do with my fist up in the air. And I thought, there's something not right here. None of my teammates have come after me. And I had to retake the penalty because the, the keepers apparently moved. So when I got back to the penalty spot, I could hardly breathe. <laughs> I was, anyway, I stuck it in, but I turned around to my me, me dad and my dad was shaking his fist at me and I was shaking my fist back to say, I've scored my first ever goal for Man City and we used to watch him on the kip acts. And to do that feeling, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, it, was, it was a great night I think it was Ipswich Town actually who, 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 who uh, I think we turned them over 1-0 I think well, Thanks very much to Mark Lewis for his contribution to the recent podcast you can hear the full hour long version remember on your favourite podcast platform by searching Ian Cheeseman or Forever Blue and there'll be more like that in future editions and thanks again to charleslouis.co.uk for their sponsorship keep well see you soon it's great being a blue isn't it <laughs>